Okay, so let's start. Um, well, I, I will talk about a, a very uh, simple problem that uh, uh, I, 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 I find very interesting because uh, many uh, many uh, theories, mathematical theories, converge in uh, the mathematical model of the uh, that that uh, describes uh, a mass spring linear system. Um, okay, so um, we will talk about the direct and inverse spectral analysis of. Uh, of uh, infinite mass spring linear systems, and uh, 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 and uh, we will uh, first uh, talk about the the mechanical system. So I will introduce a, a, a system, uh, and then I will talk a little about the model. Uh, uh, more precisely, the 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 object, the mathematical object that models this system, and uh, we will see uh, uh, that many uh, mathematical theories that that uh, uh, were uh, uh, that uh, an important. Uh, role in the development of mathematical analysis in general. Um, all these theories converge in our model. So, um, and, and the model is, is just an operator in a Hilbert space. And uh, uh, we will study the spectral properties of this operator. And uh, when we talk about direct and inverse problems, we mean uh, the following. Uh, so I will talk about uh, uh, okay, so uh, this is the, the the main object of our consideration is just a linear system in which we have different uh, spring constants and different masses. and They are arranged in a linear system, just as uh, it is uh, indicated here. And um, we will see that uh, uh, how interesting is is the, the the model that describes the movement of this system so um, uh, first we uh, we will uh, do what we call direct spectral analysis direct spectral analysis This is just the following. We have uh, an operator which is related with to this system, and uh, from the operator, which is completely determined by this uh, uh, sequence of masses and sequence of spring constants, we uh, can compute. We we compute the spectrum. Okay, and then. We consider the situation when we make a perturbation of the system uh, in the following way: in 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 the n mass, we we uh, make a perturbation, and we also make a perturbation of the spring constant of the n. Uh, spring of the system. And then we again compute the spectrum. So we have two uh, 
spectra. And uh, the, the point here is to uh, understand the interplay between the, uh, these two spectra of the uh, unperturbed and perturbed system. This is the direct spectral analysis. Uh, but uh, we also are interested in the uh, inverse spectral analysis. Okay, here we have the spectrum of the uh, unperturbed and perturbed systems, the spectra of the unperturbed and perturbed system, and we uh, want to recover the mass and the spring constants of the system, and uh, also the uh, magnitude of the perturbation in the uh, end mass and m constant of the system. Um, so we have here the situation when um, uh, in the direct problem uh, the operator determines the spectrum. We have here uh, in, the in, in inverse spectral analysis how can we recover the operator from the spectrum, uh, actually from two spectra. And uh, usually we need additional information because uh, it is not always uh, true that uh, just uh, the, the knowledge of the uh, spectra of the unperturbed and perturbed systems is sufficient to um, find the operator. Uh, well, this is uh, the case. The um, okay, so let us um, get back to the uh, setting. So we want to uh, study this uh, problem, and we will uh, begin with uh, some uh, motivation. So uh, some motivation of the problem. Uh, you will, of course, uh, object that uh, we cannot find in nature such systems. So uh, this is a, a very uh, artificial, unrealistic system that is not uh, found in nature. But uh, actually, uh, this system uh, is is a model. We study this system not because of the system by itself, but because it models uh, many situations in, in physics and in uh, engineering. Uh, in particular, it models uh, uh, inhomo inhomogeneous uh, strings, uh, also uh, linear molecules, the vibration in linear molecules, and uh, uh, what is more important for us, crystals. Crystals. Uh, in the case of uh, inhomogeneous strings and crystals, actually we have um, a, we have a finite system, but with a lot of masses and spring constant and springs and then uh, the infinite or semi infinite uh, situation which is the one which we'll, uh, we will study uh, in this course um, is is a good model of of this uh, situation in which we have a lot of masses and springs so um, we will uh, study this uh, these uh, models, and uh, uh, I just wanted to tell tell you about uh, an application, a real application of this uh, of the inverse problem. So let us uh, real application of the inverse spectral problem. 
Okay, so uh, uh, we consider a so-called micro canti lever, which is a, a structure, uh, a, a microscopic comb-like structure with uh, filaments. Uh, this is a, m a microscopic thing, but uh, in each scale, this this is very long. This is uh, there are many filaments, and uh, usually uh, when uh, doing uh, indirect measures of masses, uh, people do the following. They put this uh, this uh, micro cantilever uh, immerse this in some liquid and then measure the uh, movement of the filaments uh, of this uh, comb like structure within the liquid. This measure, uh, since this uh, thing is very small, the, measure, the measurements are made uh, with lasers. And then they, they can uh, measure the frequencies of the movements of the filaments. And uh, then they put some uh, particles in the liquid. These particles will, will adhere to some uh, filaments and then they measure again the uh, frequencies and then uh, they obtain of course different frequencies because the masses were disturbed. It's a situation very similar to the one uh, which we are, we are uh, that we will uh, study uh, here and uh, these two measures are uh, related with uh, the, uh, the spectra of the uh, system before uh, uh, the particles adhered to the uh, micro cantilever up and after that. And uh, by solving the inverse spectral problem, they can actually measure the masses of the particles. So this is one application, one real application, which occ occurs in real, li in real life of uh, the uh, uh, solutions of the inverse spectral problem. Okay, so we will uh, begin with, the, uh, with, with very simple things that uh, probably you all already know, but nevertheless I will talk about this. Uh, this is related to the uh, dynamical, to the dynamics of the system. So uh, first we will consider a finite system. So uh, we just have a string, a finite string of uh, uh, strings uh, of uh, of springs and uh, masses, and uh, let us uh, consider that we have here the uh, uh, position in which we have uh, equili equilibrium uh, of the of the system, and um, let us put it here. Have x not i. This will be x not i plus one. Okay, and uh, we just uh, apply uh, uh, Newton's law. Uh, we have that uh, x uh, i t minus x i not is the uh, displacement 
from the equilibrium. And uh, uh, this we will call xit. Um, and then uh, we know that uh, if this distance is L, then uh, the the increment in the uh, in, in this uh, in the distance between the masses is just uh, the difference between uh, these two uh, magnitudes. Okay. Well, probably I should put it uh, this way. <laughs> I plus one, I. Okay, so uh, we have this uh, displacement, and then, uh, well, we know we all know that the force is just uh, the force acting in in this mass is just the uh, spring constant. Um, I plus one, um, I plus one T minus X I T. This is uh, the force uh, in this direction. And uh, we have also the uh, spring constant um, K I X i t minus x i minus 1 t. Okay, so um, this should be the force, and actually you have to put minus here <laughs> because they are acting opposite way. Okay, so um, we can um, a very uh, easily write this in the following way minus 1 t uh, minus k um, i plus 1 plus k i plus i t uh, plus k i plus 1 uh, x I plus one t. <coughs> okay. Um, okay. And um, well, and, and we can actually write this in the following way. Um, M using not Newton's uh, law. is equal to uh, to this force um, let us introduce I want to write this this way well let us introduce a uh, uh, <laughs> matrix let us introduce a matrix which is just a diagonal matrix this way and also uh, another matrix which we will call K uh, which is a three diagonal matrix K1 plus K2 K1 K2 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 So uh, we have this uh, three diagonal matrix, and then uh, we can write uh, this uh, this uh, system in the following way. Uh, 
we have just M um, no, X this is a vector some physics do that <laughs> this kind of thing um, and this is um, K times K I eh, we got K ok so we have this uh, system and um, let us write this system in a uh, uh, different form we can uh, multiply left multiply this by m minus one half uh, one half m to the one half uh, we can do this uh, actually it was minus uh, we can do this, there is no problem, the, the, this is a uh, diagonal matrix with uh, positive entries, so we can of course consider this operator here, and uh, we obtain, um, obviously we can also write this M minus one half, K M minus one half, M one half X uh, of T. Okay. It's observed. No, 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 it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. So, um, uh, so we can uh, then do the following, um, uh, the following consideration. We would obtain here M one half X equal to this thing and then uh, we consider a new vector which we will call u which is just uh, the thing that is in the right hand side so it's m to the one half x uh, in the left hand side so um, so we can write finally our system in the following way u uh, second derivative uh, is equal to l uh, u where l is equal to m minus one half k m minus Okay, so uh, we have this uh, simple system and uh, the matrix uh, L, the matrix L is uh, just a uh, three diagonal matrix and uh, uh, I think I will skip the following. <laughs> well, I, I will explain Okay, so um, uh, in, in, in the theory of, opera of linear operators, uh, usually we have the following definition for an operator. Uh, an operator T is said to be uh, bounded from below. Uh, from below, if... Uh, one can construct the um, quadratic form of the operator 
and find a, a number m which uh, acts in the following way. So um, the operator is said to be bounded from below if this happens and um, it is also true that if uh, we, we also say that t is greater or equal zero, this is the operator zero, uh, if and only if m uh, we can have we can uh, find an m uh, greater or equal zero such that this happens. Okay, so uh, okay, so we have a homework here. I think that in the way I uh, introduce the matrix L, uh, it should be true that um, minus L is, uh, so this is our first homework. Okay, we have to check that uh, our operator, in the way uh, it, uh, we uh, introduced it, is uh, uh, satisfies this condition. Okay. Okay, and therefore we can consider uh, we can consider the the eigenvalues of uh, our uh, matrix. Um, well, this is just a finite matrix, so um, we can consider the, the set of uh, eigenvalues of, of L, and uh, let us consider them in this way. Let, let me see, actually it is... I think it is correct. It is. It should be. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, so. Um, let us put this. So, lambda k are the eigenvalues. Eigenvalues of L. L and uh, because of this uh, condition. All these are uh, negative numbers, and negative numbers. Well, are uh, less or equal to zero, and um, it should be uh, well for the purpose of our uh, illustration. I will consider this, uh, which is actually the, the absolute of uh, lambda k. And, uh, okay, so we have the following equation. Oh. Yes, for from this equation, we actually have that uh, u second derivative uh, j is equal to lambda j uh, with minus uh, u e j okay so we have uh, just uh, written this okay in the following uh, where where now u j is is the following is the u is um, the the composition of um, this vector with respect to um, delta j which are the eigenvectors of 
Okay. So uh, if we consider this situation, then we have our matrix diagonalized, and we can write the system just in this way. So, okay, and uh, we can solve this uh, differential equation. It's not difficult. And then we obtain, uh, we obtain something like the following. Um, well, let us write just in this way, which is uh, simple. U J naught cosinus J uh, because I took this uh, to be positive uh, plus U J naught dot minus uh, lambda J tilde J tilde okay so it's not difficult to, to see that this is uh, the system that is obtained from uh, this simple differential equation so we have uh, this solution and we see that if uh, for example uh, we uh, have the the system in in uh, in equilibrium um, and and assume that at at uh, the initial moment uh, there was no movement and then we just uh, uh, push some of the masses move well uh, at least one mass of the system then we can consider that the this uh, vector was just uh, Zero. So this was true for all j, and uh, we see that we have this uh, oscillation, and the frequency. This is the, <laughs> the important thing. The frequency is just the uh, uh, is directly rel related by this uh, expression with the spectrum of our operator L. So, uh, and actually all the movement of the system is a superposition uh, of these uh, oscillations. So, uh, knowing the spectrum, it's, it's uh, sufficient for uh, knowing uh, the movement of the system. So, the spectrum is uh, directly related with the movement of the system. Okay, so we have come... Uh, to the following situation, um, uh, it <laughs> turns out that if, if I uh, have not uh, a finite uh, mass spring system but, uh, but an infinite one, then uh, it is not difficult to see that we would obtain here a matrix, a three diagonal matrix which uh, has the following properties. Uh, it's a, a three-diagonal matrix that I will always write in the following way. And uh, we will assume that, well, of course, I, I have this, this matrix is uh, probably uh, was, um, uh, one will not satisfy, uh, or probably satisfies, yes, satisfies the conditions that I will give now. I will consider the sequence of, uh, of elements in the main diagonal to be uh, uh, real and the sequence of element in the off diagonals to be uh, positive. 
to be positive. Uh, this consideration is important and we will see uh, later why this is uh, important. Uh, the set of uh, matrices that uh, are given by this uh, three diagonal uh, matrix and uh, the entries satisfy these conditions are called Jacobi matrices. And uh, this object is actually important in analysis because they uh, they played a central role in the uh, theory of symmetric and self-adjoint operators. So, uh, Jacobi matrices are, uh, are an, a, a thing that we should consider. Okay, so, um, well, we have matrices. Actually, uh, the, o the, the important objects here are not the matrices by themselves, but the uh, operators related to them. So uh, we will study operators related to these kind of matrices, but here we have uh, uh, we have to consider that in general the operators related to these matrices are not bounded. So uh, we have to talk about what is the matrix representation uh, of unbounded operators. Okay, so um, um, okay, so uh, matrix representation. Of unbounded operators. Okay, if, if uh, we have an operator uh, bounded and, and defined in, in the whole space, uh, the class of operators, of bounded operators defined in the whole space is denoted in this way, uh, then uh, the problem of uh, the matrix representation of the operator is just trivial. We just have to take an orthonormal basis uh, take the uh, bilinear form, so suppose that you have a, a orthonormal basis and uh, you have to take just these numbers and these numbers determine uh, the matrix, but these numbers form a matrix and they determine the operator and the operator, as we have already shown, determine the matrix. So here we have a one-to-one -one correspondence between operator and matrices. Uh, but if uh, an operator is not here, is not bounded and not uh, defined in the whole space, so we can consider, for example, again a, a basis but now we have to assume that all the basis is inside the domain of the operator. Because it should be, even if the operator is densely defined, that elements of a basis are not in the domain of the operator. So uh, consider this case. And uh, then we can, of course, write uh, this. So we can, because they are in the domain, we can write these uh, uh, numbers, complex numbers, and uh, we have a matrix. We have a matrix, but now how the matrix is related with uh, uh, related to the operator? Uh, for example, if we have an extension of our operator, uh, since this is an extension this acts exactly in the same way in these elements. So we obtain the same numbers. And then uh, this matrix is the matrix representation of which operator? Uh, this one or this one? So we have to sort out this, this question. 
And there is an algorithm for doing this. Uh, and uh, this algorithm is uh, uh, valid only in the case of symmetric operators. Only in the case of symmetric operators. So let us consider that we have a symmetric operator. Symmetric operator is uh, an operator which has this uh, this uh, property that is, is is a restriction of its adjoint. Uh, okay, if if we have a symmetric operator, then we can uh, do the following. Um, okay, again we consider that we have an orthonormal basis. Uh, in the domain of the operator, mm. and uh, we have the following definition. This is a definition. Definition. Uh, this made this uh, basis is a basis of representation. I think that's the name. Basis of representation of A, of A, by definition, if, uh, if, uh, if this happens, star happens, and, and there is no restriction of A, there is no close restriction of A. There is no close restriction of A such that uh, such that delta K such that this sequence is completely in the domain of B. This is a strange definition, but that that's the definition. Okay, so uh, we say that this is a, a basis of mat matrix of representation of, of A. Uh, when 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 the basis is completely in the domain of, of, of A, and we cannot find a closed operator inside our operator. Uh, for simplicity, let me consider that our operator A is closed. I uh, should <laughs> uh, an operator is closed. Let us consider this definition. A is closed. This means that uh, the uh, graphic of the operator seen as an uh, as a subset of h plus h is a closed set this is a set and this defines what means closure for an operator okay okay so uh, this is the definition of uh, and there is a, a theorem which we will not prove uh, which tell us that uh, if A is a closed symmetric operator, then uh, always exists a basis uh, of representation. Okay? Uh, this theorem and find this theorem in a Hieser. Hieser and Glassman, is of such a book. Well, I will give the bibliography at the end of the course. Uh, well, so, um, okay, so we can, uh, and now how, what means that a, a matrix what means uh, that we have a, a basis of representation? That 
So how much time do you, do I have? Some someone knows? <laughs> Because we have to go to another to another place. So. Okay, so probably, um, yeah, probably I will finish here, so that we can. Uh, I will finish here today, and then uh, I will just uh, uh, say a, a, a pair of words about what is uh, uh, coming. So. Uh, we will study in detail. So, uh, why I, I am talking about uh, matrix representation? Because I want to uh, consider the operators that are related to this kind of matrices, but are related in a way that this matrix is the matrix representation of that of those operators. Okay, and. Uh, the operators related to Jacobi matrices are called uh, Jacobi operators, which is not a strain. And uh, they have uh, a, a, a series of remarkable properties that uh, we will see with some detail in the next uh, talk. Okay? So, uh, well, I will stop here. Uh, are there any questions? Well, uh, if the operator is symmetric, this means that this thing is an operator. Automatically, this implies that the operator is densely defined. Uh, well, the, the, the answer is the operators are densely defined. Is that yes? Yes. There is no problem with, with all that I have uh, uh, said because uh, you can have a dense, set, uh, a, a dense set, but there is a lot of things out of this, this set. Okay. Okay. Uh, are there any other questions? You can con construct them. Yeah. yeah, this is the the, the proof. <laughs> yeah, you can construct this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So okay. So we see.